The Mudsill Theory by James Henry Hammond. Speech to the U.S. Senate, March 4, 1858. In all social systems there must be a class to do the menial duties, to perform the drudgery of life. That is, a class requiring but a low order of intellect and but little skill. Its requisites are vigor, docility, fidelity. Such a class you must have, or you would not have the other class which leads progress, civilization, and refinement. It constitutes the very mudsill of society and of political government. And you might as well attempt to build a house in the air as to build either one or the other, except on this mudsill. Fortunately for the South, she found a race adapted to that purpose to her hand, a race inferior to her own, but immediately qualified in temper, in vigor, in docility, in capacity to stand the climate, to answer all her purposes. We use them for our purpose and call them slaves. We found them slaves by the common consent of mankind, which, according to Cicero, lex naturae est, the highest proof of what is nature's law. We are old-fashioned at the South yet. Slave is a word discarded now by ears polite. I will not characterize that class at the North by that term, but you have it. It is there. It is everywhere. It is eternal. The senator from New York said yesterday that the whole world had abolished slavery. I the name, but not the thing. All the powers in the earth cannot abolish that. God only can do it when he repeals that fiat. The poor ye always have with you. For the man who lives by daily labor, and scarcely lives at that, and who has to put out his labor in the market, and take the best he can get for it. In short, your whole hireling class of manual laborers and operatives, as you call them, are essentially slaves. The difference between us is that our slaves are hired for life and well compensated. There is no starvation, no begging. No want of employment among our people, and not too much employment either. Yours are hired by the day, not cared for, scantily compensated, which may be proved in the most painful manner, at any hour, in any street, in any of your large towns. Why, you meet more beggars in one day in any single street of the city of New York than you would meet in a lifetime in the whole South." We do not think that whites should be slaves either by law or necessity. Our slaves are black, of another and inferior race. The status in which we have placed them is an elevation. They are elevated from the condition in which God first created them by being made our slaves. None of that race on the whole face of the globe can be compared with the slaves of the South. They are happy content, unaspiring, and utterly incapable from intellectual weakness ever to give us any trouble by their aspirations. Yours are white, of your own race. You are brothers of one blood. They are your equals in natural endowment of intellect, and they feel galled by their degradation. Our slaves do not vote. We give them no political power. Yours do vote. And being the majority, they are the depositories of all your political power. If they knew the tremendous secret that the ballot box is stronger than an army with banners and could combine, where would you be? Your society would be reconstructed, your government overthrown, your property divided, not as they have mistakenly attempted to initiate such proceedings by meeting in parks, with arms in their hands, but by the quiet process of the ballot box. You have been making war upon us to our very hearthstones. How would you like for us to send lecturers and agitators north, to teach these people this, to aid in combining, and to lead them?